The most versatile action camera that is available on the market right now just got better. Are the new 4K boost lens, the new processor and the multiple enhancements enough to beat the competition? Is the 360's One RS is here and is ready to rock. Let's inspect! So, you know me, action cameras, they take such a significant part of my life because in almost every review that you watch here on the channel, there is something shot with an action camera. It doesn't matter if it's the 360 or DJI Action or GoPro, there is some action cam footage. And good to meet you, my name is Michael, your tech Mishka, tech for all, this is where we inspect cool and fresh tech. And when I saw Insta360 are releasing their new One RS product, I, I thought, I need to try this out. Uh, didn't qualify for the first wave of the reviews because of um, embargoes and some other delays and other reasons. So I thought I should do it my way. You know, the usual thorough inspection of uh, this body and mostly focusing on the real life performance. There is no way you not to be aware what action cameras are, because now even smartphones are often coming with ultra wide angle cameras, often promising action camera like experience. Undeniably, GoPro leads in terms of popularity, followed by DJI and Insta360, and there are a whole lot of other cheaper brands aiming at nicer value packs, like Kakaso, SJ Cam, Victor, Cam Park, and so on, fighting in the price segment below $200. The new One RS with the twin edition pack comes at the price of $550, which is expensive, but it's a fact that this box alone replaces two cameras. If you buy the equivalent devices from GoPro, that's gonna cost you close to 1000 bucks. Or similarly, DJI Action 2 plus Insta360's dedicated Panoramic X2 camera, it will even exceed this threshold. Standalone, equipped with the new 4K boost lens, it costs 299, undercutting GoPro by far. The other great news is that the new components are backwards compatible with the previous generation, so there's a bunch to praise about Insta360's design ideas. But on the other hand, there also are some trade-offs, as you will notice later in this review. Unpacking. Some great experience, and I've expected nothing different to that. Here's the twin edition, and I'd strongly recommend you to consider getting any of these kits together with it, because they would arrive at a very good value. In my case, the motorcycle kits seem to be a good idea since I want to try out the camera on the bike, and this is where the micro SD card comes from. Here's the main unit, it's called the Core, with the new 4K boost lens. It's detachable, but none of these parts can be used standalone. You need to build the setup by yourself, and apparently instead of the 4K boost lens, you can put this 360 degree mod. Here's the battery, obviously replaceable, unlike what DJI did with their Action 2's main unit. We have an optional boosted battery base, which is a bit larger. I would go for the standard battery kit, however, and just order an extra battery, since otherwise you need to also use a different bracket. Even though these joints and connectors are quite exposed, this whole thing is waterproof to 16 feet, which is close to 5 meters, with the remark you need to use the bracket. Clicking all these joints together is really satisfying and I can even call it addictive. Build quality is fantastic. It's plastic made with quality joints. I've used the One R ever since it got released and noticed zero degradation with these mechanisms, even after lots of diving and seawater impact. The specs. That's quite an important topic because in the action cam world, there's the big fight to deliver the best possible resolutions and stuff. There's a multi-core main processor with in-body image stabilization this time, undisclosed vendor. The 4K mod is backed by a 48 megapixel half-inch sensor, which can record up to 4K 60 frames per second video. There's an optional 360 degree mod, RAW photo support, replaceable 1445 mAh battery, inbuilt Bluetooth and Wi-Fi support, and a lot of Camera Pro grade controls. To put things in simple words, specs are all right, they're pretty good, they're not brilliant. For instance, we don't have support of 4K 120 frames per second, because of various reasons which uh, apparently Insta360 do not want to disclose. Like, for instance, the exact type of the image sensor. We know it's 48 megapixel, we know it's half inch. Therefore, my educated guess would be that it's the Sony IMX586, but 
I never got a confirmation from Insta360 that it really is the image sensor inside, so it's just a blind guess. Also, I'm guessing that they do have some sort of a new edition of the Umbrella chipset inside, which is responsible for the overall better performance and the real-time HDR with image stabilization. But again, nobody really did confirm it. Probably the only way to figure out is to make a complete tear down. Now, uh, compared to the competition, GoPro provides 4K 120 FPS, which is not supported by this camera, and it also provides 5.3K at 30 and 60 frames per second, which also is a no-go for the Insta360. But I think the One RS is mostly designed to be versatile and to be modular, because no other camera can be so easy to disassemble or to let you install the mods that you're about to use, or simply to replace the battery whenever it's empty. That's how easy it is to use the Insta360 ONE RS. Now, I think I should show you some more footage, shall I? a number of different shooting modes. Here I can favor the HDR mode with image stabilization, so a good opportunity does really well in daytime. As stated already, now the stabilization is GoPro and DJI like, it's camera inbuilt, still called flow state, but now if you want to apply flow state in post-production, you need to select the relevant post mode in the settings. I don't notice much of a difference between both, but I feel like Insta360's recommendation is to use the in-camera flow state stabilization. It has three grades of intensity, and I've mostly used the standard one. Know that there's latency between the frame captured and whatever is being displayed on the screen, something similar to what happened to DJI's first generation for action cameras. It got improved over time, so I count on seeing the same thing happening with the One RS. Stabilization is indeed GoPro grade. Of course, the brighter it is outside, the better for the image quality. Since I prefer the analytical approach, side by side with GoPro Hero 10, it is quite interesting to see that the results are pretty close. These samples are recorded in flat or log mode and color graded so that both look as similar as possible. If we zoom in three times, I think we can agree that the GoPro footage looks a tad better and seems to have the better dynamic range. However, if we switch to HDR mode on the Insta360 ONE RS, this significantly improves the color reproduction as well as the dynamic range and it also has image stabilization. 4K 30fps is the maximum here, no 4K 60, but the video quality is, in my opinion, a lot better and seems to be the Hero 10 in that regard. With the 360-degree mods, there also are some improvements. Now it's possible to have object tracking while you're recording, which is quite a night upgrade. Coming back to the 4K lens, in nighttime compared to GoPro, Insta360 seems to excel. The larger image sensor and the pixel binning are enough to provide a lot more details and better image quality with a lot less artifacts when image stabilization is applied. I need to be very clear about something. When it comes to both cameras, I'm, I'm not telling you that Insta360 has the overall better image quality, because it really depends on the scenario and the mode that you shoot at. For instance, in daytime condition, I think both cameras have almost identical performance. You would hardly notice any difference in 4K, 24, 30 or 60 frames per second. Maybe GoPro in the standard settings has tad better dynamic range. Uh, when it comes to dynamic range, however, uh, if you go for the HDR mode on the Insta360, because yes, it has such, and it has image stabilization up to 4K 30fps, it clearly is a little better than what we get on the GoPro. Uh, when it comes to slow motion, this is your body, 4K 120 frames per second, 1080p in 240, uh, 1440p in 240, this is amazing for slow motion, up to 10 times slower without any image degradation. When it comes to low light scenarios, I would favor the quality of Insta360 ONE R because it looks like the image sensor here is superior. Time for the microphone test and also a vlogging test. And this is how far I am from the camera itself, kind of one arm away. And for the audio test, I've picked a location which is 20 meters away from one of the biggest boulevards here in the city, which I hope is going to give us 
pretty good idea about the audio quality and while you let me know in the comments below what you think about the microphones let me share with you that uh, the RS has three microphones in total it's one more than what the predecessor provides and also you can attach a wireless microphone inside the settings menu there's the air pod section but it's a fact that you can connect to pretty much any kind of true wireless earbuds to edit the footage you can count on two separate software solutions the easier is the smartphone app which i can easily call the best action camera app on android device at the moment a lot more features as compared to GoPro and DJI's apps and covers everything you may need. Presets, config adjustments, file transfer, templates, even live preview when recording in 4K, which GoPro continues to not support. As for PC and Mac users, there's a convenient post-production software, which is to be used in case you have selected the corresponding setting in the stabilization tuning or you need to work on a 360-degree video. Both are currently free of charge and really worth trying. So far, besides exploring a lot of footage, you also have the chance to look at the menus. I really wanted to push this part towards the end of the video when I talk about the drawbacks. Menus are there, they're actually good, highly customizable, the alignment makes sense and there even are some improvements, like the presets, that is something new, or the quick zoom in feature which also can be used as a double zoom. But fair to say that the presets, while being a nice implementation, they don't have all the settings as GoPro provides via the Pro Tune selection, which for occasional vacation videos is just fine, however for some professional related tasks is not that user friendly because you usually have to rely on the smartphone app. I also find the touchscreen awkwardly small. The size is obviously a consequence of the modularity and even though it is equipped with all the swiping actions and a lot of menu options, after close to two years using it, I can clearly state whatever they tell you about the display, it is small and you're likely going to struggle with it. The door covering the micro SD and USB port is also at least annoying. And further to the drawbacks, there is no 4K 120 frames per second, the not too great microphones and the lack of on-body quarter inch mount. In my humble opinion, for most people, unless, unless you're slow motion addicts like I am, uh, this action camera is going to be a great fit. It's going to deliver amazing quality, which probably is going to exceed by far your expectations. But of course, there are certain scenarios where GoPro would be more suitable. Still, I think Insta360 have designed something quite unique in this modular design, allowing you to switch to different components and modes and replace whatever you want to replace and upgrade whatever you want to upgrade is one of a kind and unbeaten. And I think we should respect and praise them for creating such an awesome design, which probably is going to let you upgrade to the next generation as well. I really hope this is going to be the case. And uh, hopefully these few minutes showing you how Insta360 ONE RS performs in real life has helped you to decide whether this is the right choice for you or to satisfy the hunger of getting to know some fresh, new, cool tech. So in the end, would you prefer ONE RS over a GoPro Hero 10 or maybe DJI Action 2? Let me know what you think in the comment section below the video. Of course, if you have any follow-up questions, other experience to share, I look forward to reading all of that in the comments below. As usual, links to the products you've seen throughout the episodes, linked somewhere in the video description. My name is Michael, your Tech Bishka. It's been such a pleasure to spend some time with you and tell you everything about the ONE RS. I look forward to seeing you in our next video. Have a great day. Bye.